I'm going to get on to the main part of the show tonight, which is uh, going to be Norm North. We're starting out. Uh, so Norm North, uh, he's worked for the Canadian Wildlife Service Environment, uh, with Environment Canada for 36 years as a waterfowl specialist. His main responsibilities included duck and goose management and studies related to their habitat. He's worked as well with a variety of bird species, including morning doves, swans, and snow buntings. And he's traveled with his job throughout North America and into the Canadian Arctic. Uh, after his retirement in 2009 from Canadian Wildlife Services, he worked with Vets Without Borders in Ecuador to help train biologists there in uh, duck capture techniques so that they can sample ducks for avian influenza. Uh, currently, he's a professor of ornithology, which is bird studies at Sir Sanford Fleming College School of Environmental and Natural Resources Sciences in Lindsay, Ontario. And he also provides consultation services to various municipalities, organizations, and individuals on water or waterfowl management. And he's working with the town right now on our Canada Goose Management Strategy, which will be hopefully completed uh, by the end of the year. So with that, I'd like to invite Norm to give his presentation. There you go. Good evening. Um, I'll go briefly over this Canada Goose um, issue in Oakville. Oakville's not, doesn't stand alone. We started mostly around the Toronto waterfront in about 1978, um, shipping Canada geese out of there. When I first started working for the Wildlife Service in 1973, um, Canada Goose was not an issue. Uh, the first time I dealt with Canada Geese was not until 1974 when there was two geese eating somebody's petunias near Aurora. So the population has steadily grown over the years and I've watched it grow from very few birds. Um, the birds were reintroduced I, um, to the waterfront um, in Toronto in the 50s, and since then there was uh, other introductions or reintroductions of geese throughout Ontario. Um, the populations continue to grow, and now it's pioneering into new areas such as central Ontario, cottage country, where we're, um, a lot of the new population growth and concern is occurring up towards the core of the lakes, Muskoka's, where they're visiting the um, cottages. Um, some of that has to do with people now um, probably at the cottages a little bit more and mowing the grass and the geese find that very attractive. So it's not only Oakville that has an issue with um, too many geese at times and sometimes like the geese you have to decide are they friends or foes. People really like geese, I like geese, I like seeing them fly around, would I want a whole large number in my backyard? No. Um, where the carrying capacity for the backyard is or how many you can tolerate um, varies depending if you live on the waterfront, if you have waterfront property, enjoy flying the birds. So it's a very complex issue when you get wildlife tied in um, with humans. So that was one of the questions I thought when I was preparing for um, this talk. Um, I came across, I had this one slide that somebody said, beware of geese when they're nesting. Um, they're very aggressive when they're nesting. Um, the, um, readily attack people. They show no fears at times, particularly urban geese. Um, some geese, rural geese, may um, abandon the nest or leave the nest until you leave. So every goose pair um, reacts to humans differently. So the one is a foe, but at the same time when I was up in Lindsay, there was also someone advertising new um, real estate properties up there, but they're using Canada Goose uh, logo to attract people to the area. Um, at the same time, there are some issues and concerns with too many geese in the Corthus. Uh, pairs of geese generally mate for life. Um, there is a hunting season on Canada geese. It's currently going on. It begins in early September and the hunting seasons have been extended quite a bit to reduce the number of geese um, in Ontario or to stabilize the population. Approximately about 160,000 Canada geese are shot in Ontario every year. Um, what the current population is, sir, everybody guesses, um, some people are saying around 500,000, but there's really not a very accurate count of the current popula population of Canada geese in Ontario. Um, the eggs are incubated for about 28 days. Um, the clutch size varies, um, but generally around four, or six, eight eggs are, um, you are rarely seen. Uh, if there's only one egg, often it's not successful. So, but any thing from two to whatever um, you will find. I've also have seen two geese raising 92 goslings and the reason is the dominant pair go around and gather up goslings from the least dominant pairs, the least experienced. So you can sometimes see quite large brood of Canada geese. 
Um, the geese also are, uh, live up to 25 years, so even if you solve a goose problem at the gosling stage, then it takes quite a while to get a handle on the adult population. It's a long-term type of thing. Um, the survival rate is very high, both for goslings and the adults. They're intelligent birds, um, for, if you want to use that term intelligent, but I think they are. And um, so the survival rate is very high. They're large birds, they're aggressive. Survival rate for goslings are very high as well compared to ducks because both um, parents protect the um, goslings and very good at. Um, typical um, predators are foxes, coyotes, bald eagles, and humans. There's different techniques you can use. Some work, some don't. Um, some depend on what the situation is. Um, the one person was having quite a um, successful time using model airplanes to scare geese off a of park property. So I took a picture of one of his model airplanes. He was having a good time doing it. But there's also some question, and I've asked the question because it's um, illegal to scare um, geese without a permit with aircraft. So the question is, is this really an aircraft? And I don't think that's been totally answered yet. Um, you can't use a shotgun to scare geese unless you have a permit from the Wildlife Service. You can't oil eggs unless you have a permit. Um, if it's during the hunting season, you have a permit to hunt so you can shoot Canada geese. Um, the coyote may work well. Um, I hear there's a fair number of coyotes in Oakville, so, you know, depending on it, but it's short term. Eventually the geese learn that this is a tied up coyote. You know, they, it doesn't move. But if there's active um, coyote activity around a park, then it might be worth putting the coyote out for a while or if it's in your backyard. Um, Geese are highly afraid of dogs and dog-type creatures, foxes, coyotes. Um, this was another example. Somebody hung a goose. They were so frustrated with the goose. They just hung it up on a tree and they painted it orange, I guess, to represent blood, but how it has no effect on geese. They don't understand that. It may give you some satisfaction in your frustration, but it does not work. Um, plastic swan decoys. Um, it's possible that, thank you, um, may work really well. Um, because swans dislike Canada geese, I've watched one that flew up about 500 um, meters yards, um, landed on the goose's head and started picking at that goose's head and jumping on every time it came surface. And um, even though we're rounding up geese, I still felt like I should protect that Canada goose. So we <laughs> took quite a bit of effort, and that was the mute swans and their populations increasing too along the waterfront, you may have noticed. So they're very aggressive. So a plastic swan may work on your property. We don't recommend people um, releasing swans anymore. They were at one time a sort of recommendation because the population of swans is growing so rapidly as well. Um, you can put road signs up um, to protect the geese from getting hit by cars. Um, there's accidents caused by cars, uh, very serious accidents. So you have to be very careful. And I noticed when I was driving in here, that sign no longer has one goose on it. It has about six geese on it. So I think the population must be growing in, a, um, in Oakville. And then is it really a goose lane to protect the bicyclists or is it uh, for geese. The numbers of geese in Oakville prior to the roundup, this is a, a graph that I put together showing the population starting about 1990 and that's prior to the roundup. It starts um, in June, um, so it'd be a, a goose count at the end of May, beginning of June of how much prior to the roundup. And you can see um, it's taken a while to get a handle on the goose situation. In the last couple of years, um, it seemed the, ten, the trend is definitely down and fairly rapidly. And in some areas where we caught geese before, we have a transport truck and it handles about a thousand geese. Um, there, we'd often go just to two parks and we'd have all the geese. But now we have to go further and further afield and get the tens and the fives where before we wouldn't even bother with that. So it, it definitely has an effect on the goose numbers in um, June. Um, the goose roundup begin usually in the 20s of June, and then that's not the temperature, that's the dates. Um, usually around the 21st, 22nd of June, a uh, majority of geese are flightless then. Not all of them, but a lot of them are, most of them are. And uh, we have to really watch the temperature. We can have um, hot, um, very hot days that period of time, and we start very early in the morning at first light, and the geese get on the road as soon as we're concerned of any temperatures, or when the truck's full. And we use a, a fair amount of staff to do it, and um, some are volunteered, some are paid. Uh, and the geese generally are out in the lakes, so we have to round it up, start rounding the geese from the lakes onto the shoreline. And this is just a picture of um, a transport truck. It's a livestock hauler. There's a bunch of individual compartments within it where we can sort. You don't want all the birds in one compartment because the geese can't pile up at one end or the other end. 
um, they have to have their own space and be um, controlled within, within the truck. And then we just herd up towards the ramp and then they go up the ramp. Here you can see there's not any, too many people even pushing them up. Some of the geese have been on the trip a couple of times, they know. Um, but not all of them. It works, ex it works very well. And, but some of the geese do know and they do remember very well. There's just a picture on the bottom. I guess I have a laser pointer, but I imagine you can see the geese in the back of the truck in the compartment. Usually about 75 geese in the compartment, and there's three or four layers, and they can put over top of the truck as well. And um, the fellow has been um, very experienced in handling birds. He knows what to look for, and we haven't had any uh, um, bad episodes for a long time. Um, and I think the weather's been cooperating too. So they easily go up that ramp, and Sometimes um, a little more difficult. In the past and once in a while we ban the geese if we have a new project and we want to see what the birds are doing or we have a new initiative or moving them to a different place or a new park, we put bands on them. Um, the plastic bands up at the top, they're colored bands, you can see them with your eyes or binoculars so they're much easier to track and um, gives us more information. With the smaller metal bands, you basically either have to recapture that bird sometime, it has to be shot and then reported to the banding office. But with the plastic leg bands, uh, we get um, instant rec recoveries right away. We can see the birds. So in the other years, we want to know when we ship the birds, how many came back right away in a couple of weeks or how many got shot. And um, so which gives us all the information to maybe tweak the operation a little bit to um, make it more effective for whatever's trying to be accomplished. This is actually an embedded video, so I'm gonna have to minimize this and I just wanna show you a quick video on. Anyways, this is just about a minute video and uh, there doesn't seem to be any audio, but this is basically people clapping hands and moving knees. Oh. So the birds are well trained and so are the people that are herding the birds. It takes sometimes quite a bit of effort to get them on the water. A lot of people are very experienced now. They've been coming, which really helps if you have the same people, at least the leaders, each year. Inside, they can see different compartments. And there's different ramps within inside the truck. And there's a guy hiding around the corner here to shut that door. When he has enough, he counts it. So stressed out. Anyways, I wanted to show you a quick video because it just looks, it's kind of interesting the way the geese do go up the truck quite willingly um, with not, but they're not, it's not always like that, but it really helps when we have trained people. And in the early years, we had a lot of difficulty getting them up there. Um, Elmer Wildlife Management Area is just south of London, Ontario. Um, it's, there's the town. And there's the release location. It used to be an old um, Air Force base um, training area. It's 300 acres in size. It's got a viewing tower um, where you can observe the birds. It's a great place if you ever want to see um, swans coming through about um, March 10th in that area. It's a, worth the drive to see how many um, tundra swans or what we used to call whistling swans arrive. It's uh, quite a spectacle. Also, there's a fair number of ducks and geese and other wildlife. It's a fenced in area. Um, it's the geese, when we let them off the truck, it's basically a reverse of what you saw there. Open the door, the ramp's put back in the truck, and the truck driver basically walks behind them, and out the ramp they go. So it's, nothing's really too involved, it's just, if I played the video backwards, it's the same idea. I don't have a video of them um, being released, but these are birds that are being released, uh, walking across the pasture. It's a great area. Um, you can see there's other wildlife activities taken. These are um, nest boxes for mallards. So lots of open water. Um, they've been replaying in um, native prairie and native grasses, and there's much grass and much open water as well. It's, it's fenced, so it's quite a nice summer vacation for the birds. Um, this is the numbers similar. I put this little graph. This was the first graph I had up earlier, so you'd um, see the uh, change numbers are can compare. So prior to the roundup, 621, and then 74. 
And these are just not exact numbers, even though they're showing exact numbers, everything, you should put an approximate sign in front of it. Um, it's around that number, but it w it's not wildly off. Uh, so you can see from each roundup how the numbers drop. 74, so we got 600 there, and this time when there was 1,000, it went down to 97. So it's quite effective at getting rid of geese for a short period of time. Um, some of the other things you can look at as far as towns or even in your own backyard is habitat modifications. And this is what I'm working with um, Oakville um, somewhat on trying to look at parks and public areas and how they can be adjusted to reduce the number of geese um, in the parks. Uh, so I've had a fair amount of experience in most of my working career. I, had the, I was lucky I got to drive around basically in my truck and look at, see how things worked and be involved in waterfowl projects. So I have a, a good idea of if you modify a habitat, what I, the expected response should be or may be, as well as I know um, about the goose biology and the way they react to different situations. Um, so what I'm doing is just putting a report together of saying, if this was my backyard or this was my park and I had to reduce the number of geese, what would I do to reduce the number of geese? Or if this happened to be a hunted area, it might be the opposite. What would I do to increase the number of Canada geese? Um, but really my role here is to how to reduce the number of Canada geese in some areas or keep the population at its current population. Maybe it's acceptable for that park. It depends on, everybody has to decide what the goal is for the park and what people want. Um, 100 geese basically make the same amount of mess as 1,000 geese. Like it's either, there's a lot of basic goose poop on the ground with 100 geese and there's a lot more geese, uh, goose poop on the ground with 1,000 geese. So you just have to decide what your tolerance level or where they're spending their time. Um, if you could keep it off the walkways, maybe people would be a little more tolerant of some geese. So it's uh, always a guessing game, What? not a guessing game, but sort of like a guess game. If I do this to this property, how will the geese react? And sometimes they don't necessarily react to the way you think they should, but generally they do. So some of it would be um, placing, get reducing geese love grass, especially golf courses. I think that's fertilized. They're really mowing sh short. They love grass, so the idea would be to get reduced this carrying capacity of this park for geese, make it less uh, appetizing for as large a number of geese, and maybe ten geese are fine. Maybe there's a thousand. You want to get it down to ten. So some it's goal setting, and the goal could also be zero geese. So it would be to reduce the amount of um, grass underneath this tree. Um, would be to put more wood chips or some other ground cover. Um, naturalization of shorelines is important, and this is particularly important up in cottage country as well. If you do have cottage property, is to try to naturalize naturalize as much of the shoreline as possible. Um, that you can you can still see the lakes. Um, you can build paths. Sometimes the naturalization you'd have to um, offset a bit so the geese don't have a straight sight line. So it looked like the whole front of your waterfront is um, naturalized or covered with vegetation when in fact it isn't. There is a walkway behind it. Geese don't like going around the corners because sometimes they go around the corners and I have seen this. A fox will be on their side and they'll grab um, the bird. So they like to have a clear view of the water, especially when they're flightless. And geese are flightless in the month of June and the beginning of July. On July 15th, they can become, they're flying again, and they're flightless for about 40 days. Another thing um, landers, landowners can do is put up temporary barriers, and some people do that with little pieces of string if it's about eight inches high. Um, geese, when they're flightless, especially when they have goslings, don't like going under a string or over top of a string. But even to make it more solid would be to actually um, use this lattice work, and I really like this cat's khaki lattice. It's, aesthetically pleasing somewhat, and it's um, got a small mesh on it, and it's relatively self-supporting, and then you can put this along your property, then plant your um, wildflowers or naturalize, and um, it'll give, meanwhile, in the meantime, it gives a barrier against geese while the um, naturalization is taking um, place. Also, you can look at the grass type. Instead of Kentucky bluegrass, you, this is um, eco grass. It's sold up in Midland. So you can look at the grass type, uh, a more coarse grass, um, the geese do not prefer, they prefer a really soft type grass like uh, Kentucky Blue. Also re increasing the mowing height, they like short mowing grass, there might be parts of your yard or the parks that they can actually increase the mowing height so it doesn't make the grasses um, edible. The other thing you can do is um, scare geese if you're a landowner, but you can't harass them. You can go and scare them away with your dog, but you can't really um, harass them without a permit. 
Um, dogs work really well. They're afraid of foxes, coyotes, and dogs. And uh, so if you can, um, a park, for instance, may want to encourage dog walking in a part of the park where they really don't want to have geese. And at the far fringes of the park, maybe not encourage dog walking as much, and that's where the geese would gravitate to. Um, or as far as if you're a landowner, if you own a dog, then it's quite effective at scaring geese off your property. Another thing you do is egg oiling. Um, usually the towns are involved in it. Depending on the situation, it's possible an individual could get um, an egg oiling permit, but you need a permit to oil eggs. And the eggs are co coated with either mineral oil or safflo oil, uh, vegetable oil and the eggs don't hatch, you put the eggs right back in the nest. If you take the eggs, they're like a chicken, they'll just keep laying more eggs. Um, so you want to leave the eggs still in the nest. Um, so it reduces the number of goslings, but it does not reduce the number of adults. So the best way is to, if you're in Oakville, report to the town office and they have their crews would come out and oil the eggs. And this sort of goes back to naturalization, is to reduce the area of um, lawns on your property, big open lawns, plant more trees, more shrubs, and more naturalization. And a way to do that is to plant um, more flowers, um, leave some areas a little more wild. Again, you're trying to reduce the carrying capacity for Canada geese. You're trying to not make it as attractive. You're trying to break up the sight lines so the birds don't have a clear view because they were, they're trying to look for their escape cover by heading back to water. Um, so if you can break up the view of the, for the geese of the lake, whether they're flying, and if they're, um, then you want higher vegetation. If they happen to be walking some months of June and early July, then you want to break up their um, sight lines um, for the goslings and um, the adults, which stand about 32 inches high. Um, so naturalization, it's a, a good way of reducing the landscape and increases the number of butterflies, the birds on your property, the biodiversity, and the beauty. And that's the end. Thank you.